Are you surprised at all about the result then? Because you guys were a top 20 team. This was before things kind of spiraled out of control. Do you remember feeling surprised or shocked by what happened for a team to come in here? I mean, me personally, like, I never expected to lose. So uh, I'm surprised, not surprised every time, but um, I don't expect to lose. So. Uh, you know, uh, it's kind of different when you're when you're part of it, and not, not the outside looking in. You don't look at all the analytics and stuff. You just look at uh, kind of what you can do. And, uh, you know, I thought that you know we, we could have won that game, but at the same time we didn't. So uh, you got to take what you can take from it and, and, and move on and, and get better uh, on the next opportunity. Tim, in a new role, you're playing a lot more on the outside. Last year, you saw good time on the outside and in the slot. What's kind of the difference mentality wise, and also just preparation wise, working from the outside? Uh, I mean, mentality-wise, I think it's pretty similar. Um, you know, obviously it's a little bit different position, but at the same time, it's very similar. Um, and then, you know, just probably who you watch, you know, the way you look at the defense when you're studying. Uh, you know, you're probably looking more, you know, nickel triangle compared to, um, you know, studying some of the corners and stuff like that. So uh, that's probably the biggest difference. But um, honestly, Justin's been great. And, um, I played outside receiver in the past a lot, so it wasn't really you know, too much to change. And given your skill set, what's kind of the different things you can incorporate playing on the outside versus playing the slot and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, I think on the, on the outside, you have a lot more one-on-one -on -one matchups, um, a lot more press man, uh, stuff like that. And on the inside, you, I think you can do a lot more cerebral. Uh, you, you know, you're often working like pockets and space and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest difference um, between the two that I noticed. Now that you watched the film the first game, I think um, a lot of people notice you know, there were a lot of short throws, dump offs, to try to get guys into space. How much of the plan going in against Buffalo was to do that? How much was did Buffalo take away some of those deep balls? Because there were only a few of them thrown. Like, what can you describe what the what the plan was and how much it changed? Uh, I don't know how much I can go in the, in the okay. game plan. You got to ask Coach Longo for that one. But um, you know, I think that one of the great things that Coach Longo does is he takes advantage of kind of some of the weaknesses in the defense. Um, you know, obviously we're able to run the ball with a lot of success. Um, some of those short passes just turned to, you know, first downs, explosive plays even. Um, so I think that, you know, being able to take advantage of being able to make the defense guard all aspects of, you know, our offense is, is something that makes us special. Sorry if you asked about this already, Tim, but playing a team that you lost to last season, just that add a little bit to this week in the prep, just wanting to get a little bit back on them? I mean, of, of course, you know, you want to uh, – you know, get a team back that you, you lost the year before. But at the same time, I feel like you have to approach it the same way. Um, you know, they they have a lot of good players, a lot of good athletes on their team. And, um, you know, I'm just focused on, you know, being as prepared as I can and help my teammates get as prepared as they can. So uh, we can go out there and perform the way we want to. What do you remember most about their defense? What was the biggest challenge that they, they presented? Obviously a big scheme difference for you guys this year, but just when you look at their personnel, what was the biggest challenge you'd say? Yeah, I think they just have really good athletes. Uh, you know, linebackers move really well. D-line moves really well. Um, you know, the corners, uh, you know, long and athletic. So um, I think that, you know, just really good athletes around the board. Um, obviously, really good football players as well. But um, just understanding that, you know, uh, when you have those athletes, it just makes, you know, windows tighter and um, execution has to be better. You've kind of become a leader of the wide receiver room. And I'm just curious, just the, the pass that Skyler dropped Saturday, it, he took it kind of hard and really put it on himself. Is that your quarterback had an interception on the next play? Do, do you say anything to Skyler in that instance, or do you just leave him go because he, he's experienced enough? Or you pull him aside and say, hey, don't worry about it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's just, you know, let him know that you got to, you got to, next play, next play. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously I'm not going to sit there and, um, you know, have a long conversation with him. He, and the, he, I mean, that's a play he makes 99 times out of 100. And I know that, you know, he was, uh, you know, disappointed in it. But at the same time, it's our job as teammates to go pick up. Because, you know, there would be a point in this season when um, I don't make a play that I probably should have. Um, and I expect, you know, my team is to have my back. So I always have a guy back like that. I know that he's going to make, you know, the next opportunity that comes to him. So um, just, just allowing him to, uh, you know, have that confidence in himself and continue to have that confidence. And, you know, kudos to him. He did a good job moving around and playing a, a, a good rest of the game. Talking about your touchdown drive, I mean, your touchdown score, kind of you got the ball, a, a big, long run, and a, willing yourself into the end zone. What's your mentality in that kind of play? And take us through how, essentially, you got into the end zone. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, once it came on deep dig, um, you know, Tanner threw a perfect ball. All line um, protection was great. Like, outstanding. Um, caught the ball. I saw the safety was there. Uh, tried to make him miss. Felt the linebacker coming. And, uh, you know, we practiced C2 split, too. So just try to split him and get in the end zone. Uh, you know, obviously, it was really exciting. Uh, anytime you could score in Camp Randall State, especially opening day, was um, pretty special. And, 
uh, you know, and then with the way this is even more sweet. Talking about this receiver room, I mean, the leadership aspect, the top three receivers are now incoming transfers or incoming, well, from elsewhere, CJ Williams, uh, Bryson Green, Will Pauling. How do you kind of approach that with this room? And how do you not only kind of get everyone on speed on the field, but also off the field throughout this entire offseason? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, we got to spend a lot of time um, around each other. Uh, you know, the guys that came in, uh, you know, CJ Will, Quincy, Bryson, um, and, and also the returning guys, and, um, just be able to, you know, get to know each other on a, on a deeper level, for, you know, just on the football field. Uh, you know, kudos to, those, kudos to those guys. They make it super easy. They're great guys. and um, They work their butt off. So uh, it's been, honestly, a great transition. Play styles for all these four receivers are pretty different. Like, how do you how do, how do you guys kind of learn from each other in the wide receiver room, and what's kind of been the that process overall? Uh, you know, I think that you, there's certain things Will Paul can do that I can't, um, you know, and uh, but being able to take some stuff from him, uh, you know, kind of give some some of the stuff that I know as well, um, so they can apply it in their own way and you know in their own game. I think that um, you know having different experiences, coming from different places, uh, learning different things, and um, also just having Coach Brown there to, to kind of guide us and um, support us. You know, has been great. And, um, he's done a great job of you know getting us ready for for the first game, and um, I know that he's going to continue continue to help us grow throughout the season. Kind of a smaller stadium than maybe you guys are used to when you go on the road that you're going to be at this weekend. What have you learned throughout your career about how to prepare or how to kind of get yourself ready on a, in a road environment, and especially this one where it's so far away, you're maybe not going to have the same fan support you might have in a Big Ten game? Yeah, you know, obviously, um, you know, supporting, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, emphasizing communication. Uh, I think that's super important. Uh, you, you know, when you're on the road, communication gets harder. Uh, so just emphasizing all week of practice. Uh, just knowing that you have to lean on your teammates. Um, you know, I think that that's really whatever. Um, you know, even if you're at home, you know, fans can go up and down. Sure. Um, that's just a natural thing of watching a football game. I've been there before. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm super thankful for Wisconsin fans. But, uh, you know, we kind of have to uh, be able to keep our calm no matter if it's, you know, people cheering us on. Uh, we have to go execute the next next or who maybe don't want us to succeed too. Uh, you know, you just have to go out there and execute and trust your brothers.